Today, we go over the figures that are gonna cost me the most to get, and my stomach is already turning. Welcome back to The Journey, and if you're new, we're collecting the entire Star Wars Kenner line, starting from 1977 and ending at 1985, and yep, we started from scratch. So if you need to go back and catch up, please do. So this is an episode that I've been both excited to do and also dreading to do. Because as I get closer to completing my run, there are gonna be some figures that are gonna cost me a lot of money, a considerable amount of money. Some of you may know which ones those are because you may be on the hunt for them as well. And if you are, this video may be of interest to you because we're gonna list off the high prices of the figures that we both have to get. So if you've been watching my episodes, you know the deals that I got on some figures. Most notably, the EV-99 and the Imperial Gunner. Now the Gunner is going for about $350 for a loose complete figure right now. And EV-99 is going for about $400 on average. And we got both for a price of $350. So we're looking for deals like that. But to know that we got a deal, we had to understand what the average market prices were. So let's do a top 10 list of the figures that I need and the prices for them. So if I don't mention one, it's because I either bought it already or it's not on my collection run. So let's get into it. And let's warm up with a special mention. And it's because this figure is probably a staple in a lot of your collection runs. And it's one that I'm excited to get and it's the least expensive one on this list. It's Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight. And low prices of him are running about $100 with average prices at about $140. There was one that was sold for $425, but let's not get crazy and include those one-off data points, unless you wanna pay that much for a figure. Number 10, the Imperial Dignitary. I don't know about you, but this isn't a figure that I'm looking forward to buying. But I'm still excited to get it because it is part of the vintage Kenner line, and I'm glad it's not a figure that'll break the bank too hard right now so you can find figures at a low of $125 and a high of around $230. Number nine, the Droid Factory R2-D2. This figure was never released on a card back, but in the 1979 Droid Factory playset where you can build your own droids, and yes, one of them was R2. And it came with a third leg that never came with R2 in his mint on card figure. And I thought this one was so interesting, I had to include it on my collection run. But to get one that's in near mint condition will run you close to $300 on eBay, with some figures as low as 150. Number eight, Han in Carbonite. To me, this is one of the most interesting figures in the line, just because of his accessory, the block of Carbonite, which he perfectly fits into. And some people have made fun of the face and the neck mold as if he was an NFL fullback. But hey, let's see how you look after a year in Carbonite. Prices for this figure are at $200 for the lows and getting close to 400s for the highs. Number seven, Warrock. In my opinion, no Ewok should ever be this much, but it is my favorite Ewok, so there's that. Right now, average prices are nearing 300, with the highs getting close to the $400 range. Number six, Luke in Battle Poncho. The only problem I have with a figure that costs this much is why doesn't his helmet come off like his sister's does. Average prices for this figure are running at the $300 mark with highs in the low 400s. And now we're getting into the price points, which, you know, makes my hands a little bit sweaty and my financial advisor a little bit nervous. So the figures that are breaking the high dollar price points, coming in at number five, it's another Luke Skywalker, and this time his helmet comes off. It's the Luke Skywalker in his Stormtrooper disguise. I call this one the John Denver lookalike, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. But yes, the fact that his helmet does come off, and Kenner did give us this figure, makes it one of my favorites. Prices for this one are coming in at $300 with highs breaking 430 and a weird price point at 750, but don't pay that much for this figure ever. Number four, Yak Face. I'm excited not to only find one of these figures, but one that I can afford. I recently almost bought a Yak Face with a coin for $1,300, and yes, the coin on its own sells for close to 1,000. So looking for the figure, they are averaging for around $500, with highs in the $700 to $750 range. Number three, pop-up R2. Why is this figure so much? I mean, why are all of these figures so much? And this one I've seen climbing in the last two months. I was wondering if he was getting his own show on Disney Plus or something. Average prices for this figure are passing the $500 range, 
with highs at $725, with anomaly prices at $1,000. But don't pay $1,000 for this R2, please. If it was up to me, I would say don't pay past 500, but it's not, so there's that. Number two, no toe dent blue snaggletooth. Why a no toe dent? Well, we already have a toe dent version of the snaggletooth graded at 80 from AFA, and apparently it's the more expensive and sought after so we're gonna go after the lesser expensive no toe dent version for our loose display run. And prices for this guy are running close to $400 with highs at $600. But Anomaly's running at 1,000. Yeah, don't pay 1,000. And before we get into the number one figure that I have to get, let me tell you about my new gaming chair. I wanted a gaming chair that was comfortable as I do live streams and my show and I'm sitting for hours on end but I wanted one that would look great in my office and not looking like an arcade. I went with this design from Dalinex. I love the brown leather and quilted features and it's comfortable as heck. To get yours, visit the links in my description and when you click and buy from my links, it does support the channel, so thank you for that. And the number one high price figure on my collection run, number one, the Vinyl Cape Jawa. There was a crappy loose one being sold for 2000 and I passed on that one. Then there was another one for 2100, but I had some reservations about the cape being authentic. And I made an offer for $1,400 on one, but that got out of hand and soon went to almost $3,000. So right now, these guys are nearing $3,000 for loose, and I hope they come down. It's crazy. But for right now, we're on the hunt for one of these figures on this list, and one of them is in the top three. Since I just told you about my failures on the Vinyl Cape Jawa, we can rule that one out. So it's either the Loose Snaggletooth or the Pop-Up R2. So let's go unbox a figure. I always love when a seller sends packages with care and knows how to wrap a figure up, especially when it's a high price item such as this. And yes, we got ourselves a Pop-Up R2. So let's check this figure out. Now the figure isn't in the most mint of condition and there is some dirt along the legs that I'm gonna clean up with a damp cloth, a tiny bit of soap and warm water, but these astromech droids from Kenner, you do not want to get the sticker all wet. So I'm gonna be very surgical when getting rid of that carbon scoring. But other than that, the sticker is yellowing a tiny bit, although it is intact and perfectly laying along the body tube. The dome is shiny, with some imperfections and a little bit of cloudiness in the dome, but nothing that looks horrible. But the real thing that makes this little droid expensive is the green lightsaber that pops up from the hole in his dome. So the head is supposed to click and push the saber up as it clicks. The saber looks good and has the weird bulb at the end of the saber. It does have the hilt with the rises on the hilt and the EPM. I did show this to two friends who are vintage collectors and they both agreed it's all authentic. And that's the thing you have to really look out for when buying these online and really anywhere when you buy these loose and not graded. So we got this from a seller in Spain who was on a Facebook group that I trust and we got the figure for $350 with shipping included. So for this figure, we also found a coin for sale for $50 on the Vintage Alliance, so we picked that up as well. So the total for the R2 and the coin came to 404. So let's place our pop-up R2 in our collector displays case and with the new coin as well. And that bottom of the case with the last 17 figures is starting to fill up. So thanks for going on a top 10 list of the figures that I need. And honestly, my stomach is turning a little bit by thinking about how much money I still have to spend. But since I've been budgeting for it, I know it's coming up, so at least that's good. And if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button, it does support the channel. And if you wanna support the channel for free, you can hit that subscribe button. And also hit that notification bell so you know when videos go live. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.